Yes, thank you uh, for our praise and worship. And uh, welcome again, everyone. I know, like uh, this time, uh, Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock, is a very uh, delicate hour. You feel like you want to sleep. All right? How many of you, you attended the service this morning? Okay, all right. So how many of you came from work? All right. So you know what? Yeah, sometimes it's very difficult. But for those of you, uh, you just stayed a little bit late in your bed. And then you are so refreshed. And then uh, coming here to worship the Lord is another blessing. All right? So uh, thank God again for this opportunity uh, for us to study His Holy Word. Uh, the continuation of my message about is our salvation is secure. The answer is yes. Mukhang hindi yata eh. The answer is our salvation is secure. Yes. yes. We studied the last time that our salvation is secure. All right, please turn your Bible with me again. Uh, in the in the book of uh, sorry. All right. Romans 8.28 Okay, I'll start 29 for now. Alright? It's a long day for most of us, but thank God for the strength. We thank God for uh, even for the wisdom. That instead of just uh, sleeping this afternoon, we are here to worship our God. Romans 8. 29, it says here, For those uh, for those God for you, He also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those He predestined, He also called. Those He called, He also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. I pray that you will give us the alertness of our mind as we study your word. We want to renounce, O oh Lord, any other spirit that will hinder us, O oh Lord, to study your word. Father God, give your wisdom and your anointing to your messenger. In each of one who are here right now, I pray that we will be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So I said earlier, before we go back to our uh, our uh, main message this uh, uh, this afternoon, in verse 28, in Romans chapter 8, he said, God called us according to His purpose. The moment we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that's God's purpose and God's timing. I still remember October 18, 1980. Some of you, you were not born yet. Should I? When, when? 1980. When, when did you born? 83. Okay. So you were not born yet. Some of you. 1980, when I came to know the Lord, I still remember. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, you know the day, you know the time or the year, you accept Jesus Christ. That's God appointed and God's purpose and God's will for us. And also, we are forever secure because that was God's power. We are forever secure. And we are so thankful to the Lord because our salvation is secure. And we, we are not uh, thinking about tomorrow that, oh, if I have committed sin, then I'm lost. Thank God that He gave us, given us this eternal security. So it means so our security is guaranteed not only by the purpose of God, but also by the outworking of that purpose through the intercessory ministries of the Son and the Spirit and the Holy Spirit. So the answer is yes, our salvation is secure. The first point a few weeks ago, your salvation was a so great act of God. We found it in Ephesians 1, 3 to 5. 
And even in here, verse 6, 17 to 18. We found out in this that salvation was sovereign act of God when God saw Adam and Eve committed sin in the Garden of Eden. The act of God is given us a salvation. In Ephesians 1, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with His every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So it is God who given us. Even he said in, in verse 4, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that He would be holy and blameless before Him. That's, that's the act of God. Even before we were born, even before we, before we have been created, God already saw us. God already uh, see that one day you will accept Him as your Lord and Savior. So God's salvation was sovereign. And we also we studied uh, number two, that the paradox of sin. The paradox of sin. That, that uh, in eternity past, chose us to believe in the truth in 7 Psalms to 13. And the Bible says that people go to hell because they reject the gospel. And the paradox regarding God's choice of much responsibility is not the only paradox in the scripture. But basically, it is and our sin was totally given by God. It is Jesus, God or man? We answer that question as well. Yes, he was God and man while he was still on, on earth. And Christ was not a blend of God and man. He was 100% himself as God. And, he, and, and also, we will see here in, a, uh, in our Christian life, the Apostle Paul said, I discipline my body and make it my slave. So it means both of you and Christ live your life. So it means when a person comes to Christ, it is because he was chosen in him before the foundation of the world. I thank God one day, it is like a, uh, a microscope that one day, this person that you and me, we will accept him as Lord and Savior. And we thank God for all of this blessing. And also the purpose of salvation. And the purpose of salvation, because God wants us to make us like Christ. And also let there be, God created us for a purpose. That's why God created us for a purpose. And that's why in, uh, in, in Philippians 3, 21, he said, The Lord will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of His glory. And our glorified bodies will be like Christ outwardly, will be conformed to the post-resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's the purpose of salvation. God wants us to be like Christ, and God created us for a purpose. And also, lastly, and this is our message this afternoon, so the purpose of salvation is to conform us to the image of Christ. Now, the progress of salvation. Now, this is our focus this afternoon. The progress of salvation. There are five elements, as I've studied, about the unfolding plan of salvation. Number one is the foreknowledge. We already read earlier, in verse 29 of Romans chapter 8, it begins, For those who think for you. That is where the redemptive plan of God starts. With this foreknowledge, some people have suggested that God foreknowledge is the same thing as a foresight. His foresight. They envision God in heaven looking into the future with binoculars. But if he 